وأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون وقال تعالى ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن اعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت وعن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله تعالى عنه قال كنت رديف النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فقال لي يا معاذ أتدري ما حق الله على العباد قلت الله ورسوله أعلم قال حق الله على العباد أن يعبدوه ولا يشركوا به شيئا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Dear brothers and sisters in Islam I have recited two verses of the Holy Quran before you and one hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. In these two verses, it is clearly mentioned by our Lord, by our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all the mankind, all human beings are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are created, nobody has doubt in his creation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you are created by me, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are created for some purpose. That purpose is clearly mentioned in these two ayat and in so many verses of the Holy Quran <coughs> that your purpose is to worship Him alone, to obey Him, to do ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O mankind, ya ayyuhan nas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the mankind not a specific group of people, not a specific class of people, no color, no language, all these things are for ta'aruf, for introduction. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling the mankind, the human beings, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اُعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ Obey your Lord, worship your Lord. أَلَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ who has created you, who is your creator. And those who were before you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you attain taqwa, righteousness. You become pious people, righteous people. muttaqin. The other words of the Holy Quran sounds. Indeed, we had sent in each nation a messenger. A Rasul with this da'wah with this message to call the people towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with this message that when you worship Allah so worship him alone and avoid shun ta'ud shaitan in whatever ka in whatever uh, shape he may come before you Shayateenul Jinn or when you, when you follow your own desires your own selfish desires Hawa so this is also a kind of Shaitan inside sitting here so shun and leave and avoid Shayateen Tawagheet in whatever shape come before you the hadith is on the riwayah of Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu who is a famous sahabi and companion of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, once I was riding before, behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in, in that time when I was traveling with him and riding behind him, he asked me, that was the way of education to teach his sahaba. And through sahaba, teach us Educate us. Sometimes Rasulullah sallallahu is asking the Sahabi. And then he gives the response. And then to that response, 
Rasulullah sallallahu either affirms that, that okay, your response and answer is correct. Either he corrects him. Either Sahabi said that Allah and his messenger knows well. So here in this case also Mu'az bin Jabal was asked that do you know what is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over his creation? Mu'az replied, Allah and his Rasul knows well and better. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa replied that this is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over his creation, over his servants, over his ibad to worship him and do not associate partners beside him. This worship should be only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you bow your head before Allah, not before anything else. When you obey the commandment, somebody's commandment, someone's commandments, instructions, should be the instructions and commandments and ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now brothers and sisters in Islam, the concept of ibadah. It is known to us, these sermons of Juma, in fact it is a kind of reminder also to each other. Maybe I will not be able to aid something in your knowledge. The sisters and the brothers sitting here, they may know better than your khatib, than your imam. Because these are the simple things, but the simple things we should remind to each other. The lesson that we already learned, everybody know that what is our purpose. Of, of creation. Everyone knows that what is the concept of ibadah. Everyone knows different details. But we have to remind it again and again. With this intention and with this dua from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this specific time should be a turning point in our life. That we knew already but we want to know again and we have the will to act according to these instructions and commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what I should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that what you should ask. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should give us that tawfiq, that hidayah to pray, to practice according to these things. So brothers and sisters, the concept of ibadah is not specific only. Not confined only to a specific religious obligations. Salat, zakat, hajj, saum. Of course, these are the pillars of Islam, very much important. But these are not the only ibadat. There is a wide range, wide field, wide, wide instructions before us regarding our social life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min. Three times he sweared that by God, he is not a believer. By Allah, he, he or she is not a true believer, complete believer in Islam. Sahaba asked, Qila man ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who, who is not a believer, true believer? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Qala allazi la ya'manu jarahu bawaiqahu. He is not a true believer, she is not a true believer who is harmful or who creates problems, hurdles for his neighbor, he, who is harmful towards his neighbors. His neighbor is not safe from his behavior. His neighbor is in trouble from him, not happy to live beside him. So now brothers and sisters, it is not, men not mentioned in this hadith that your neighbor must be Muslim. No. He could be non-Muslim. He could be mushrik. He could be, could be non-believer. But he is living beside you. He is staying beside you. Or he is working with you. Or he is traveling with you. So you should fulfill his rights. He has rights over you. And if you are harmful to him, so according to this hadith, we are not true believers then. This is also ibadah. What is ibadah? Shaykh al-Islam, Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. Shaykh al-Islam, Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, a great scholar. Everybody knows him. Heard his name. 
once somebody asked him, the Sheikh explained to us the concept of ibadah. What is ibadah? Mal ibadatu wa ma furu'uha. Define to us what is ibadah. If, if it has some branches or details, or if you can classify it, so please explain to us. Shaykh al-Islam replied in detail. Written, written answer and written response was given to that sail, to that man. That jawab and that response of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah has been printed also, and it is available. The title of that jawab is Ar-Risala Al-Ubudiyya. Ar-Risala Al-Ubudiyya. If somebody wants to know what is Ibadah, so read this. In the beginning, Shaykh al-Islam defines it. He says, Al-Ibadatu ismun jami'un li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allahu wa yarduahu. Al-Ibadatu ismun jami'un li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allahu wa yarduahu. Ibadah is a, is a comprehensive term for whatever thing, amal, action, hidden action, manifest and clear action, amal zahiri, amal batini, whatever that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with that amal, so that is ibadah. And after that he gave examples. Salat and zakat and hajj and all those things he mentioned. At the end he says and he concludes Shaykh al-Islam again concludes before you and me that if we forget that detailed answer, so at least we will not forget the, the conclusion. We will not forget the, the, the definition, the comprehensive definition. He says, فَالدِّينُ كُلُّهُ دَاخِلٌ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ فَالدِّينُ كُلُّهُ دَاخِلٌ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ This deen, Islam, this, the, 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 all, the, all, the, all, all the details, and all the commandments, ahkam, in this Qur'an, and this, in this Islam, in this deen, this is ibadah. When you obey the whole deen, when you follow the whole deen, and deen is the way of life, brothers and sisters. Islam is submission. It's submission to, the, to, to, to God, to Almighty Allah. Deen, the way of life. Wherever you have life, wherever you live, so you are asked to do something and to avoid certain things. So brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us instructions regarding the social life. Sibabul Muslim fusuqun wa qitaluhu kufrun Abusing another Muslim by your tongue, with your words. When you, when you when you utter a few, some words before your brother, your sister, before a human being, he could not be a Muslim. When, when you hurt him, so Rasulullah wasallam says, this is fisk. Fisk means grave sin. Masiya kabira. Wa qitaluhu kufrun. And killing him is kufr. Disbelief. When you kill him, when you take gun against him, so this is kufr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Izal taqal muslimani bi sayfehima fal qatilu wal maqtulu kilahuma fin nar. Qila haza al qatilu fa ma baru al maqtuli ya Rasulullah. Qala innahu kana harisan ala qatli sahibihi. When two people face each other with their guns, with their swords, the murderer, qatil, and the maqtul, the one who is murdered, both will be in the hellfire. Sahaba asked that the murderer we know, but why the maqtool will go to the hellfire? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa replied that he had an intention to kill him too. And he could not get the chance. Both were trying to kill each other. And in Islam, the reward will be given according to your intention and niyyah. The brothers and sisters in Islam in the same way. We have parents. What are the rights of parents over all of us? This is also Islam. This is also Ibadah. Don't say such a word before your parents which, which hurt them. The word is which they don't like. You may be right. Maybe you understand that, okay, here my father, here my mother, their view I disagree. And in your view you will be right. But don't respond in such a way 
don't address them in such a way which which hurt their feelings wala taqul lahuma uff him that is uff whatever way that you know that they will not be happy with these words don't do that al jannah tu tahta aqdam al ummahat jannah and paradise lies under the under under the feet of your mothers in the same way your 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 father also has right over you uwais qarani sahabi of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or some historians and some scholars they put him in the in the list of tabi'in because this man was in yaman when the message of islam reached there and he heard about rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then he embraced islam in yaman he did not see rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was very far away but he embraced islam after that he had a wish to see rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the definition of sahabi you know the one who believes in rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in islam and the one who has seen him but he sent the message and asked the messenger of allah that oh the messenger of allah i already embraced islam i believe in you as a prophet of allah i want to see you but i have my parents who need my help what is your advice to me what is your guidance to me rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied responded through messengers that you should remain there you should serve your parents that is my instruction and that is the instruction of islam he remained there till rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away he could not see him but before rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away he left an wasiya to umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said to umar rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu the second caliph that after certain time you will see a convoy coming from yemen you will find some people will be coming from yemen you try to find out the man with such and such features will be called uwais al qarani when you find him so ask him request him to pray for you because he is mustajab al da'wat because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his prayers his dua ask him to pray for you umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu was looking for this sahabi for for this man uwais qarani and when he found him he said pray for me uwais qarani said you are the second caliph you 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 have ghazawat you have so many uh you can say fazail you fought with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in so many ghazawat in saraya but umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said that i heard rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who does not tell lie he is sadiq always tell truth he said that you are mustajab al da'wat so pray for me he pray for him he was asking that what is your quality what what is that so much special thing that you are doing he said i am very not i don't have so much ibadat but i had my parents and i asked rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and according to his advice i served them so he said that is your quality due to that you got that place that i am asking you to pray for you pray, pray for me and your prayer will be accepted so brothers and sisters in islam this this is also ibadat why we ignore it why we take only a few things in social life we harm others or we benefit others the removal of a harmful thing from from the from some passage where the people passes by <coughs> pass by this is also a branch of you are iman shurbatun min al iman like this brothers and sisters we know all these things we know we come across these ahadith these ayat these tafasil details but sometimes we forget our responsibilities we think that might be minor things small things no there is great reward for all these things so that is our purpose of creation and with this ibadat our intention also should be very much sincere without ikhlas without true intention nothing will reward us nothing will benefit us in the hereafter so allah subhanahu wa taala should give us this tawfiq and this hidayah 
to understand, true understanding first of all. True understanding will be in Kitab and Sunnah. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Taraktu fiqum amrain, lam tadhilu ma tamasaktum bihima kitab Allahi wa Sunnah the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." Sometimes we, 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 we in a way cheat our own self, deceive our own self when we say, "Brothers and sisters, which Islam should we follow?" There are so many interpretations. There are so many ulama. There are so many scholars. Brother, which Islam? Dear brothers and sisters, I call myself first. I say to myself that Islam, which is in Kitab and Sunnah, Rasulullah SAW said, these two sources I have left among you, two sources. You will not go astray as long as you follow these two things. Kitabullah and the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. We should spare some time in such, such, such places. And those who can read, we can read the Fasir by own self. So, we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the true understanding and comprehension and then give us the strength, the tawfiq, to practice according to these instructions and ahkam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursaleen. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. أما بعد فيا معشر المسلمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعلى عبادك الصالحين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا معهم اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منكم منهم والأموات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القرباء وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون